We continue to preview the 2023 college football season here on Midwest Sports Net, and it is a privilege to have on the program today Andrew Rohde, who is the head football coach at Indiana Wesleyan University, the new head football coach there. Uh, let's start right there. Congratulations, coach, on the new gig. Now, I know you were announced as the head coach back in January of 2023. It's been a few months. I don't know if it's been quick or slow or how it's been for you, but You've been there for a while now, so let's start there. Congratulations on the new opportunity. Thanks, Joey. Well, first off, thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate you reaching out. Um, it, it has been probably both fast and slow. Um, I think these six months, we've maximized what we wanted to do, and we've accomplished a lot of things that we wanted to accomplish in the first six months. Um, and so part of it is it's felt like really long days but it's felt like a fast six months, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about what we got coming up um, with fall camp in about uh, less than 24 hours. Uh, but man, it's it's been a whirlwind, and um, I'm just I'm really thankful to be here, and and I've loved the team that I've gotten to know so far. Well, that means a lot to me that you're taking time with us, especially with camp so close. And we are now officially in the month of August, so games are going to get going. It is literally less than a month away. I'm excited about that. Let's talk a little bit about the team that you have and and what Wildcat fans are going to get an opportunity to see this year. Now, they've become accustomed to excellence in the program, and I know that's a big deal for you as well. You've talked about excellence uh, in uh, a couple of your interviews uh, in the press conference announcing your hiring as well. So I know that's a big deal. You have some some solid players coming back. 11-2 and two last year, the Wildcats make it to the NAI semifinals, had an 11-game winning streak at one point in time, bookended by a couple of losses. But uh, you bring back Xander Stokes, among other players, and I, I would imagine that's, that's a key to your offense. Uh, this is a, a quarterback that threw for well more than 2,000 yards last year, 27 touchdown touchdowns as well and very very effective more better than 63 percent completion yeah Z Xander's phenomenal and, and let me just start here it, it it was an incredible run uh in season that they had last year especially you know you're five years into the program and they make it to the semifinals like that is an unbelievable accomplishment um by that coaching staff the players those first 50 guys that came through the program and and really set an incredible culture of excellence um, for us to kind of step in in the last six months and, and really jump off of that platform and, and try and take things to another level. So um, I'm, I'm excited about what we got coming back. But, you know, offensively, so Xander's coming back. Um, he's done an incredible job. He's a fantastic leader. Um, he's really started to grab on to some of the new pieces, uh, the things that we're doing, and, and obviously taking some of the old stuff that they had here before. He's you know, just continued to get better and better at those things. Um, but I think his mind for the game is really, really good. He understands a lot of what we're trying to accomplish as I'm teaching it. Um, and, and he's a great decision maker. Um, so I'm excited. You know, we go through spring ball and it's like he's a little overwhelmed just learning the new stuff. We get opportunities in the summer for him to continue to work. Um, and he's just playing faster and faster and better. Um, and I cannot wait for these next you know, 15 or 18 or so practices for him to just hit another level um, really as a as a player in our offense as we move forward uh, but also just thinking man he's a fifth year grad student um, he's, he's kind of finishing off his career and watching him go out and play really really good and really fast football i'm excited about that but but honestly that one of the strengths of our offense um, in terms of who's returning is going to be our offensive line uh, you've got lucas doyle up front um, he'll be playing tackle for us will angel is coming back uh, you know, those guys started a lot of games and played a lot of football in this program. Um, and then you've got a couple of guys like Ben Zebarth played a little bit last year. He'll be stepping in. Um, there, there's a strong crew um, of, of, of offensive line that we've got that I'll tell you what, you, you know, that group um, has probably done more as a whole in terms of transforming their bodies in the last six months than maybe any other group as a whole. Uh, so I'm really excited about the work that they've put in. Uh, they are committed. They're serious. Coach Jones, our offensive line coach, um, this is his first year with those guys, has really done a tremendous job getting them to buy in and and take things to another level. So I'm excited about that group. And then, you know, th the truth is, you know, behind them, we've got Tay Williams coming back. Um, he's an electric playmaker with the ball in his hands. So 
Um, I think that group right there is, is going to be one of the strengths of the offense in terms of what we're able to do and the production that we have is it's going to be a lot, a lot in the box. But, you know, around them, um, we've got a lot of new faces. Uh, we've got a lot of new faces, guys that are relatively inexperienced, I think really talented, um, but overall just they're lacking a little bit of experience. So, so camp is going to be fun and interesting all at the same time. And those guys, uh, in terms of their development and their growth and, and what they need to accomplish to be ready to play against Lawrence Tech uh, in that week zero game that we've got coming up. And we'll talk about that schedule just a, a little bit more later on as we're visiting now with Coach Andrew Rohde, who is the new head coach at Indiana Wesleyan, most recently an assistant coach with Morningside, offensive coordinator there for the past three years. And, and if folks don't know that uh, you'd spent time there, I mean, the, the numbers that were produced during your tenure there, including national championships and just some phenomenal offensive numbers. I, you talk about the young players, Coach. How, what, what is the learning curve with something like that to, to be able to come in? It's going to be fun, but I'm sure it's going to be intense. It, uh, it's a major learning curve for those guys. Um, not, not just learning the offense, but learning why we do things, learning how to develop within the skill sets that they need to be good at the offense that we're trying to run moving forward. Um, but you know, I think the truth is, is this is I, I don't really have much of an expectation for every new guy that we have in our offense to be playing at quite at the level um, as some of those guys that were kind of the fourth and fifth year guys, uh, particularly at the receiver position um, and quarterbacks, and a lot of the skill positions. I mean, that, those guys were tremendous players. They've had years of mentoring from multiple older guys. And that system that has been created by you know, Coach Ryan and, and the rest of the staff, it's, it's tremendous what they've done. Um, and, and honestly, we're hoping to be able to create something similar to that um, as we move forward on offense. But, but I will tell you this, um, they're working their tails off. Uh, and those guys believe in what we're doing, and, and they're excited to continue to progress as we move forward. And, and I know I said they're young, uh, but they are hungry. They are really, really hungry to be good uh, and to become great, great football players in this offense. I know you bring a lot to the table as a coach and, and uh, as a coordinator before and now with your opportunity as, as a head coach as well in getting to see some of the things that uh, where you had an opportunity to visit with people over the course of the last few months. I appreciated all that you bring to the table and the complete package. Now, I want to uh, read something that was listed in your bio, and folks can see this if they go to the Indiana Wesleyan page and, and look. The very first thing when it talks about Coach Rohde is, is what you want to do. And, and it says that you want to build young men that look like Jesus and to be able to compete with excellence at a high level to compete for a national championship. Those are some pretty lofty goals, Coach, and, and I appreciate the order in which they're listed as well. Can you talk about that? You know, I, I think just that that's kind of a, a, a life philosophy I've had since I've been in coaching, since I started in coaching. And honestly, that's one of the reasons I got into coaching is I had some incredible coaches that I played for in high school and college and, and the impact that they had on my life uh, from a football standpoint, a life standpoint, um, just being a man and growing in there, growing as a leader. And then from a spiritual aspect, I mean, some of those guys just had incredible impact in my life. And that kind of opened my eyes to what coaching can be uh, and the impact that a coach can have. And so that's ultimately why I got into coaching is for the ability to blend faith into football and put those two together and just help young men develop and grow in both of those areas. Um, and so I am, you know, that, that was one of the main things that kind of attracted me to this job is, is the ability to have that both and principle that our athletic director and, and really all the sports talk about here is, man, we want to compete for championships on the field yet equally. And as just as much, we want, uh, to be spiritually discipling guys at a really high level. Um, and we want to do both. It's not either or, it's both and. Uh, and that's something that I love about this place. And the more I'm around the rest of these coaches, um, and the more I see what they're doing, the, the more I grow to love this place and grow to love the mission of this place. So I'm, I'm pretty all in on it, which it's, it's a good fit mutually. 
it does look that way from from an outsider's perspective. It definitely looks like it, it is a great fit. Coach, on the defensive side of the ball, then you have some players who are coming back who put up some pretty solid numbers. They start on the defensive line. Isaac Abeo last year, third on the team in tackles, had 18 tackles for loss. That includes 11 and a half sacks as well. Let's let's start with him and, and work our way through. Uh, Isaac is incredible. Um, you know, like when I've got my offensive coordinator hat on um, and I'm calling practice and we're, we're working on the, you know, we're working on stuff and uh, I hate playing against Isaac Abeo because, because he just absolutely wrecks our offense. But then I, you know, flip the head coach hat on and it's like, man, this guy's awesome. I'm really glad he's on our team. Um, he's, he's a tremendous player. Um, but I think what I'm most proud of in these last couple of weeks, especially is starting to, um, we're starting to watch him grow into a leadership role on this team. Uh, that's something that I think He's a pretty reserved guy. He's kind of to himself a little bit, but he is so intense about football. And I, I think some of that intensity is starting to come out of him. And I, I really believe he's going to grow to be one of the, a, a great leader for our defense in mind. Um, and so I'm, I'm really excited about that uh, and that area of growth for him in these upcoming weeks, in addition to just he's going to be an animal uh, to play against for a lot of teams. He will be a problem for a lot of people. Coach, another player that that returns from last season's team led the team in tackles for you, and and I, I have to wonder if he looked at the stats and said ninety nine tackles really I couldn't get just one more to cross that century mark. So I'm sure that gives him something to work for this season as well. If you're talking about some individual goals, Clayton Mosher in the linebacker position. Clayton is, um, I mean, uh, as dynamic as Isaac Abeo is on the defensive line. Uh, you put Clayton out in space playing that kind of field outside linebacker position for us. He is as fast as any receiver you're going to see probably in the country. Um, and he is as violent as anybody you're going to see in the box. He is a tremendous football player. But again, it's, you know, as I've gotten to know him, it's his mind for the game is unbelievable. I mean, he, he's a guy that is remembering every single thing we're doing on offense in practice and it's, you can't get him twice on anything. Um, and it, there was even a practice where um, he anticipated something that we could run and got it right and, and got us before we could e- even have a chance to kind of like trick him into something. That, so he's just tremendous mind for the game. But but I'll also say this, he was uh, nominated to the All-State Good Works team about two or three weeks ago uh, and got named to that team and just because he's a tremendous person. He's a president of the FCA um, on campus here and volunteers at all sorts of organizations. So he's just, he's an incredible person and leader for this program. When you put that head coach cap back on and, and you're looking at both sides of the ball, I know that the offense probably is, is a special place for you. You look at the defense for Wildcats fans. Is there anything else that, that might stand out that they might be looking for this season? Well, I mean, I, I would think, just looking at the experience we have coming back on the defensive side of the ball, I would say that's probably going to be one of the strengths of the team the entire season or at least early on um, in the season. So we're going to rely on those guys pretty heavily um, to keep us in games and, and to do a lot for us. Uh, but some of the other guys that we've got coming back on the back end, uh, Neil Campbell is playing corner for us. Uh, he has just been growing to become a lockdown corner. Um, he's really, really talented really fast um again really strong mind for the game and, and takes it really really seriously um and behind him he's got Davis, who played some at safety for us last year he might be the smartest player we have on the entire defense um just an awesome awesome young man he's a sixth year guy so he brings a wealth of experience of knowledge uh to this team and to that back end which will, will be a little bit young i mean they graduated a lot of guys um between donnie and juice some of those other guys at safety that were really, really dynamic and productive football players in the back end. Jameis, I know, will be mentoring a lot of young guys and, and helping that back half group um, really learn to play fast and really play smart. But besides him, Luke Bays came on at the end of the season, um, really finished well, and I think he got hurt towards in one of those last games. Um, but we're expecting big things out of him playing middle linebacker for us. Uh, and then up front, the D line was really deep and dynamic last year. And they graduated a lot of guys, um, but but I'll tell you what, what we've got coming back 
it's probably just as dynamic and just as talented, but it's just not as experienced. Uh, so we're hoping fall camp can be really productive for uh, for us up front on defense to get those guys some experience because they are, again, they're going to cause people some problems um, up front because they are tough and talented and hard hard to block as I've experienced in the last six months here. You mentioned Lawrence Tech. You're on the road there at Lawrence Tech, August 26th, the week zero game to get the schedule underway, your first game as the head coach there at Indiana Wesleyan. That's followed by a bye week. Then September 9th, you're at home, Valparaiso, Division I team coming in to play a, a very close game last season. I know that's prior to your tenure, but a very close game last season. A couple of other games then on the road on September 16th at St. Xavier, and then the following week back at home again, versus Roosevelt, a team that is moving out of the NAI last season in the NAI as they move to Division Two. That's the opening to the schedule, Coach. I know you probably haven't thought much past week one, but can you talk about it a little bit? I've, I've barely thought past fall camp right now. I mean, that is, that is the primary focus is just, you know, one day at a time, make sure we've got a great productive fall camp where we've developed our guys so that when we hit that, Lawrence Tech week, we can dive into the film and the scouting and, and all that stuff, and, and our guys can be ready to play and be really, really smart football players during that game. But man, a lot of credit to Avant Mitchell, who's the head coach at Lawrence Tech. I know the kind of person he is, um, and 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 I know this, they're going to be ready to go. Uh, and that's, that's a team that is, I believe, under his tenure is growing and getting better and better. And so Whatever our guys have thought of them the previous years, it's that won't be the same team that we're going to see this on, on I believe it's September 26th. So I'm sure they'll be ready to go. I and mean, then uh, I've already talked to our guys. I know they're hungry to, to get back at uh, Valparaiso and, and get another crack at those guys, but they'll, they'll be talented as well. So, But honestly, the focus is just have a great fall camp. Um, learn, grow, go faster. And, uh, and make sure that our guys walk out healthy and we're ready to go for that long stack week. All right. Well, I, I appreciate that perspective, Coach. Three and a half weeks until Lawrence Tech, but less than 24 hours for camp. So I know that has to be the, the key on your mind right now. Coach Andrew Rohde getting ready for his first season of competition. You've already been with the program now for a few months and putting your stamp on that. Success to you, Coach, and we will follow the Wildcats this season. We're very thankful that you took some time for us today, our stop today in Marion, Indiana. I didn't say it at the outset, but uh, I thank you very much for taking time with us today here on Midwest Sportsnet. Thanks for your time, Joey. Appreciate you.